The term model-based definition, or MBD, refers to a fully defined 3D model and is quite similar to a drawing definition. But instead of annotations being attached to a 2D drawing, they're attached to the 3D model itself. Annotated 3D models are often sent directly to manufacturing to create physical parts. Let's take a look at how we can add annotations to our model. To begin, you need to go to the Annotate tab on the ribbon bar. Here you'll find a series of commands that'll allow you to apply all different types of annotations to your 3D model. Under the General Annotation panel, we're gonna use the Dimension option. We'll select the vertical line on the back of the housing, and you get a heads-up display showing where the dimension will be placed, and also the plane on which it will be placed. Before we place the dimension, it's important to know that there's a few things that you can do to improve the readability of this dimension in 3D space. First, by pressing the Tab key on the keyboard, you can toggle between horizontal or vertical text. Either is fine, it's a matter of preference. The other option you have is the spacebar. The spacebar will toggle between available planes to locate this dimension on. I'm gonna select the plane that runs down the side of the model and left click to place my dimension. And you can see that we're presented with a dialog box where you can modify this text or add additional text. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the defaults and select the green checkbox. This applies the dimension and we're ready to continue. If you rotate your model, you can see that the dimension is attached to the 3D model in 3D space. Let's do that one more time. We're gonna launch the dimension command again, and this time we'll select the top edge of the chamfer on the top of the model, and we'll select the bottom edge of the chamfer on the bottom of the model. Again, we see the plane it's gonna be placed on, and we can use tab to switch between horizontal and vertical text. What's important here is if you use the space bar now, nothing happens. And that's because the two lines that we selected as input define the plane perfectly. So now what we can do is left click to place our dimension and click the green check mark to finish it. If you rotate around, you can now see we have two different dimensions on two different planes, both attached to the 3D model. Now that we have a couple dimensions placed, let's take a look at the browser. You'll notice that in the browser now, we have an annotations folder. Clicking the arrow to the left expands it to show you the dimensions that have been contained within this folder. Let's go ahead and add one more dimension. We'll launch the command one more time, but this time, rather than selecting an edge, we're gonna select the two faces. We're gonna select the angled face on the chamfer and the top of the housing. By doing this, you can see that we're presented with an angle dimension. As I move my cursor around, you'll see that the dimension updates based on the position of the cursor. Once you find the location you like, you can left click to place that dimension, then click the green check mark to apply it. By doing this, you can see the angular dimension's been added to the annotations folder in the browser. We're now ready to look at how we can add a thread note. It works in a very similar fashion with a slight difference. If we go to the general annotation panel and launch whole thread note, we can select the top edge of a hole and the information that's contained in the hole in the model is actually used for the whole note. You can see here, we're getting an 832 UNC thread type for this hole. Hitting tab on your keyboard will rotate the text and a left click will place it. Once it's been placed, you can hit the enter key to actually apply the dimension. If you need to edit the text that's in this whole note, you'll have to do it from within the browser. Here hole four is the hole we were working with and you would need to edit this to change the whole note. Now that we have all our annotations placed, let's look at how we can export this for manufacturing. On the ribbon bar on the far right, you'll see the export panel. Clicking CAD format will allow you to export different CAD formats of this model. In this case, the most important one is step file. This is one that is generic and used for manufacturing quite often, but most important here are the options. If you click your options button, you'll see that by default, Inventor wants to save an automotive design version or step 214. What you really wanna do in this case is use step 242, managed model based 3D engineering. By selecting 242, you're telling Inventor to also include all of the 3D annotations during the export of this step file. 